bless you, dear viewer. Thank you so much for tuning in at this moment. I want us to start with a word of prayer before we go into the text. And I know that God wants to speak something to all of us very deep from the heart of the Lord. And I pray that God is going to truly minister to you. And so I pray that you can get to invite somebody that you value, that you qualify, that you really want to qualify and be part of this service. Because I know you know that person is going to be blessed. If you are in contact with our last week's message, I'm sure that you want somebody that you love to truly be part of this. And so invite somebody as we come into the moment of prayer to open this service and allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak to us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we humble before you. And we thank you because of this great opportunity to be able to discuss the word of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that humanity all over the world, wherever people are, my Father, that you will speak to somebody. I pray that the Holy Spirit will capture every soul, will capture every life, those that are driving, those that are wherever they are, in their homes, our Father, capture every soul and let them miss message coming from the heart of God descend upon mankind and capture humanity let somebody's soul be blessed let somebody be helped I offer myself as a vessel in the hand of Almighty God and I pray that you may clothe me with your anointing and power and cause your word to come forth with the clarity and with the flow in Jesus mighty name and everybody watching and everybody here present say it amen Amen. Amen. We are welcoming you to our segment, the segment of our ministry where we deal with building kingdom wealth. We are talking about building wealth the kingdom way. If you have not followed this before, I will refer you to our previous clips because they're going to give you the foundation of this message and it will help you understand where we are coming from and where we are going. On this segment, I intend to share with you five of my books on wealth and I pray that God is going to use this to touch somebody and help you truly come to the place that God has intended for your life. And so the first unit that we began to deal with is what I call the race against poverty. My intention is to empower somebody to outrun poverty. My mission in your life is that God will empower you with speed and with power and with dominion against poverty. That poverty will never shake you in your lifetime. That God will equip you to live above poverty, to have dominion, not beneath poverty level but to live above poverty. There's so many people that live under the poverty level, but I pray that God is going to empower you to live above it and that all of your life you will stay above the force of poverty for the glory of God. That is my mission in your life at this time. And so one of the things that we began to understand that I want to bring you to speed on before I get to follow up the text is that poverty is disability and today I want to share with us the fact that poverty disables your life's mission write that down poverty disables your life's mission it is a disability that gets to disable your life's mission that's what poverty is now last week we understood that what is called wealth is simply ability because when you come to this life, you come to live off of the earth. Everything that gets to feed is your human life. Everything that you consume as a human being comes from the earth. And so because of that, therefore, you are living off of the earth. Now, for you to truly be able to live off of the earth, you must have the ability to transform the earth's resources to personal property. That ability is what we call wealth because wealth is dominion over the earth that gives you capacity to number one transform the earth resources into personal property number two to own a piece of the earth that's what 
wealth is. And so when you use your human resources to transform the earth's resources into personal property, you produce a product that we call economic strength. And it is wealth that gives you the power to produce economic strength. Now the opposite of that is poverty. So wealth is ability. It's ability to pay for the cost of your life. It is ability to produce economic strength. Poverty is inability to produce economic strength. And that is what is called disability. And so when you understand that, it makes you understand that wealth is never evil. But wealth is basically capacity, and that is so important to get right now. So I want to talk to you today about the fact that poverty as a disability gets to disable your life's mission. And so I want to talk to us the fact that you are a human life on a mission. The moment that that gets into your spirit, you want to get up and carry out your mission because that's who you are a missionary. Now, the human being is a very complex being. One of the struggles that we have is that we are called human beings, but many of us don't even know what we are made of. We don't know what we are made of as a human being. So because of that, therefore, we struggle to take care of the human being and to build the human being and to get the most out of this life. But the truth of the matter is this, that you are a spirit being. Every human being is, first of all, a spirit being. In the realm of the spirit, you exist as a spirit being. When you are brought to this side of the physical realm, you must be given a soul and a body. When you're given a soul and a body, then you become a human being. And you live here for a time and for a purpose. That purpose is your life's mission. And I pray that you can begin to get it. You are here on a mission. So when you look in the scripture, then you actually find in the book of Genesis 1 verse number 26, that man was first of all in God and with God. That God spoke man. Man was in God and man was with God. And then chapter number 2 and verse number 7 of the book of Genesis, the Bible said that God gave man a body. So that man could live in the realm of the physical. When man was with God and in God, he was in the unseen realm of the spirit. But when God gave him a body, he came to the physical realm of manifestation. And so now he's living here for a time and for a purpose. And from then, man comes, man is born. And when man is born, is a spirit that's been given a body and a soul, and it comes to this realm of the physical. But then eventually, he will depart from this realm. So in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and verse number 2, the Bible says that there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. When you are born, you come into the realm of the physical. And when you die, you live. When you come to this realm, you come for a purpose. You come on a mission. There is something to carry out on this realm. And the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 and verse number 15, naked a man comes from his mother's womb. In other words, when you are born, you come. You are coming from the realm of the spirit through the realm of your mother's womb. And you come into the physical realm. And when you come here, you come for a purpose. Hallelujah. That's why God spoke to Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah chapter number one and verse number five. He told him, he told him before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. In other words, God was telling this prophet before the physical realization of your body, before you were conceived in the womb, before your mother felt the physical form of your body being formed inside of a womb, you existed in the realm of the spirit and I knew you hallelujah but God also went on in that verse of scripture and told this great prophet before you were born I set you apart to be a prophet to the nations God was telling him that before you were born 
you were set apart for a cause before the human being is born you are set apart for a mission so when you get born you are alive on a mission there is nothing that is made for nothing everything that is ever created has a purpose to serve it has a mission to serve that is true with everything that man makes and that is true with everything that God creates including your life you are a life on a mission that must settle deep inside of your spirit now let me get a little deeper you understand that when you come to this side of eternity of time as a missionary then what happens is the mission of your life must be at a cost your living on this side of time is at a cost and the process of fulfilling your life's mission is also at a cost and it is a cost you must pay for and what gives you the power to pay for the cost of your living and the cost of your life's mission is the economic strength you produce I want to say that again what gives you the power to pay for your living process and the process of fulfilling your life's mission is your economic strength that you produce that is what gives you the power to pay for your mission that economic strength is ability it's ability to pay for the cost of your living it's ability to pay for the cost of your life's mission it is ability the opposite of that ability is disability and that's what poverty is poverty is inability to produce economic strength and pay for the cost of your living that's what poverty is inability to produce economic strength and pay for the cost of your living and the cost of your life's mission. That's what poverty is. So I want you to listen to me as I begin to talk to your heart. That one of the things that poverty disables in your life, I want you to write it down, beloved. Poverty disables your mission as God's message. That's number one. Poverty disables your mission as God's message when you come to this life when you come to this side of, of time you come as God's message you are not just a carrier of God's message you are God's message that's what we see in the Bible if you look in the book of Genesis chapter number one that we've just talked about and but number 26 then you see man as God's message the Bible said that after God transformed the entire earth after God reformed the earth then God spoke these words he said let us make man in our image in our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air what God is doing is God is speaking man man is in that portion of scripture as God's idea God is speaking his idea concerning the next product that is going to build that he will call man and God talks about what this product is meant to be God talks about what this product meant to have and what this product is meant to do and so in that word is God's idea concerning man in that word is God's word concerning man in that word is God's vision concerning man in that word is God's intent concerning man and in that word is God's message and so you hear there that man is God's message spoken it is God's word spoken God has spoken man if you have the ability to interact with spoken word now you can see man man is not physical yet God has not formed him physically but he exists as a message God has released God has spoken just like right now I'm writing a book and I have that book existing in the information realm anyone that is in contact with the information realm can come into contact with that book but there's somebody that cannot access it until I give it physical paper 
so that it is a message now written on paper. Right now it is a spoken message existing in the realm of information. That's exactly how man was after God spoke him. He was a message of God. The intent of God existing, but not in the physical realm. And in chapter number two and verse number seven, the Bible said that God gave this message a body. The message that God had spoken, the word that God had spoken, now God gave him a body. And the scripture says that God formed the man from the dust of the ground. And God gave him a body. God breathed upon him and he became a living soul. So now you can see him as a physical being but what you're seeing as a physical being is the message that God spoke now given about it so if you like God has written what he spoke I want to say that again if you like God has written now what he spoke now man exists as the message God wrote so if you like again the word God spoke now became flesh that is the order of god that man was created to be a message that god has spoken that eventually god writes i pray that you get it because this is going to help you understand who you really are see several times we struggle with this we're looking for everything changes in your life hallelujah so when you look at the book of John chapter number one then you see after man has fallen God sends another man Jesus comes as man Jesus comes as God in the flesh he comes as man he comes as a human being hallelujah you see that in Philippians chapter number two and verse number six all through eight you see that all over the Bible, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 45, Paul calls Jesus the last man, Adam. He came as man. So when God comes to redeem mankind, God sends man. So Jesus comes as man. And when Jesus comes as man, he comes as God's message, God's word. So John the Baptist comes as the forerunner for Christ and when he comes to announce to us about the Redeemer who is coming, he speaks this word. In John chapter number one, he says in the beginning was the word. What is that? The message. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made and without him was not anything made that has been made. So John tells us that the Christ who has come is God's message because God intended that man should be God's message. And John goes on and he speaks about the word, the message of God sent to mankind. And verse number 14, he says, and the word became flesh. In other words, the word that God spoke now has become the word God has written. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Just like Adam was, first of all, a word that God spoke. And then eventually God gave him a physical body. And so he became a word God has written. And he became a word that has become flesh. So Jesus Christ comes as a word that God spoke. And eventually a word that has become flesh. And he makes his dwelling among us in the physical realm. The thing that I wanted to see, beloved, is that he is God's message that has been given flesh. He is God's message that has become flesh. He is God's word that has become flesh. And Paul begins to talk to us about the redemptive agenda of God. And in the book of the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, the apostle Paul speaks to the Corinthians, verse number 2 to 3, and he says, you show yourselves as 
Christ letter. It says that all of you show yourselves as a letter from Christ. That when Christ comes to redeem mankind, God is writing a letter. God is writing a message. So Paul says, when God sent us to you and we ministered to you and you got transformed and you got redeemed and your life got changed, you are Christ's letter that is sent to mankind and that is read and known by many. You are a letter from Christ. What is that? A message from Christ. That's who we are. So every time that God calls you, to redemption every time that you begin to feel the conviction of the spirit of God God begins to walk in your life every time that redemption is walking in your life and God is beginning to change you God is writing a letter for somebody because a letter is always a message sent to someone you are a letter that has been written by Christ sent to someone I want to stay there until you get it. You are a message of God that God has sent to somebody. There is someone your life is sent to as God's letter, as God's message. That is your life's mission. You might never become an apostle. You might never become a prophet. You might never become a pastor. But you are a letter that God has sent to someone. A letter is a message sent to someone. So here is where poverty then disables your mission. Now you understand that because you're a letter that Christ has written, and sent to someone. Every time that you present yourself to humanity, humanity gets to read the letter of Christ. Your life echoes the message of Christ. Everywhere that you are, your life speaks to somebody. Your life speaks to somebody as a letter from Christ. Every time that you present yourself to somebody, they are reading a letter from Christ. Every time that your family members get to behold you, they are reading a letter. Everywhere that you're passing somewhere, when you present yourself to mankind, especially to the very person that you have been sent to as a letter from Christ, when they come into contact with you, they are reading Jesus' letter. Now, the letter and the message of your life echoes to everyone you are sent to. It echoes what God has done in your life. It echoes what God is doing in your life. And therefore, it echoes to everybody what God will do with their lives when they eventually come to the Lord. I pray that that makes sense to somebody that's listening to me right now. Every time that people look at you, and they know you are saved. They know you are the redeemed of the Lord. Every time that you present yourself to them. They are given a letter from Christ. Your life is a letter from Christ. It's a message from God. And so they're reading a letter from Christ. And that letter echoes. It echoes God's message. It echoes what God has done in your life. And what God is doing in your life. And therefore it echoes what God will do in their lives. When they also dare to come to the Lord. That's where then. Your poverty and your wealth make a difference. Because then wealth in your life. Gets to present to them. What God does when he redeems somebody. When you carry wealth, when you have the capacity to pay for the cost of your life. When you have economic strength, when you have come to God and you have the ability to transform the earth's resources into personal property. And yet you still love the Lord. And you're able to give a testimony that God has given you the capacity to produce economic strength. You echo to them 
that when they come to the Lord, they too will have ability to pay for the cost of their life. Hallelujah. To echo to them the fact that it is true, God is a provider. Your life echoes to them the fact that it is true, God gives man power to make wealth according to Deuteronomy 8, verse number 18. When they see that you carry ability, when they see that your life is able to produce economic strength to pay for the cost of your living, when they don't see you as disabled, when they don't see you as a beggar, when they see somebody that is in charge of your life and you are able to meet the cost of your living, they see that it is true that God gives man power to make wealth. They see that it is true that when you come to the Lord, he raises the poor from the dust, the needy from the ash heap, according to First Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 8. They see that it is true that Christ became poor for our sake in order that we through his poverty might become rich. Suddenly the promises of God come alive in them and they truly see the truth of the fact that God is a God who enables you to pay for the cost of your living. Hallelujah. Now this is where your poverty then becomes a distortion of God's message. Poverty in your life then distorts Christ's letter. It distorts the message of God to humanity. And therefore it disables that mission. It disables your mission as God's message. Because poverty upon your life also communicates. When people look at you and they know you have given your life to God and your life carries poverty, your poverty talks to them as well. But it distorts the message that God wants to pass to them. God wants to communicate that he's a loving God. God wants to communicate that he's a caring God. But your poverty speaks otherwise. It says your God is not a provider. Your God is not a caring father. It's not a loving God. Your poverty distorts the message you carry from God. I don't know if anybody has ever distorted your message. Have you ever sent a message to someone? Or somewhere, a message you depend on. The relationship you're going to have with this person depends on it. And the carrier of that message gets to distort it. So that eventually, the opposite of what you intended is what's communicated. You know how painful that is. You know how damaging that is. That's exactly what your poverty does. Your poverty communicates. It distorts the letter. It distorts the message that your life carries and communicates to the people you are sent to. It communicates that God is not a loving father. God is not caring. It communicates that God is poor and is unable to help you. It communicates that God may be rich but uncaring. That God does not care about the plight of man. That God does not care about man's pain. As they watch your life wrecked up under pain because of poverty. As they watch and they see you can't pay your house rent. You cannot pay for your shelter. And you cannot pay for the very basic things. Then they come to the place where they think God must be very rich but very uncaring. And so the message that God wants to communicate to them then is distorted by your poverty poverty upon your life distorts and disables God's message and it disables your mission as God's message I pray that you get the beloved hallelujah it will help you to understand how evil poverty is it will make you begin to breathe and ask God what do I do next? I pray that as somebody is listening to me, the question in your heart is, what can I do to come out of poverty? I pray that that becomes the cry of your heart. That you're coming to the place where you're beginning to develop hatred for poverty. That you can no longer embrace poverty. That anything that
that looks like a sign of poverty then provokes you to anger. Why? Because you've discovered it's an evil force that comes to distort the message you carry. You'll be shocked to discover how many people have had their children's heart turned away from God because your child has grown up under a parent who's struggling so much and yet so devoted to God and they're wondering what is about this God? I was told a story of a precious man of God who used to leave the house every morning with the Bible and he would go preach and he would come back his shoes torn dusty and he's sweating and so tired and his wife would struggle put a meal on the table all he came back with were torn shoes sweat and tiredness and the daughter watched her watched him for so, some time and at the same time the daughter watched a neighbor whose father left the house without a bible when he came back home he had shopping in his hands and so one time the daughter had a revelation so when the father was picking the bible to leave in the morning the daughter suggested father please today don't go with the bible let me carry it for you so that you can also go empty-handed so when you come back you may carry shopping the girl was basically telling the father something i'm tired of this and you'll be shocked to discover how many parents have turned the hearts of their children from God because their children grew up under a parent that's struggling, saved but struggling so much until the child wondered, does this God ever care? The child begins to feel God does not care whatsoever. And because of that, therefore, the child's heart is turned away from God. That's what it means, beloved. When you carry poverty, you communicate a distorted message from God. You're letting humanity know that God does not care. You're letting humanity know that it doesn't matter if you're crawling to go to work, God does not care. That no matter how much misery that faces you, God is not a provider. He does not care about the plight of man. And yet, that is not true. Poverty communicates a distorted message of who God is. Now let me just read with you the scripture of the book of Luke chapter number 16. Verse number 19 to 21. This is a message that Jesus spoke. And Jesus was not rejoicing over this. He spoke to us a, a story about two men that lived in a certain town. And he said in a certain town there was a certain rich man that was always clothed in purple and fine lining and always lived in luxury every day. And then he went on, he said, at his gate there was laid a poor beggar named Lazarus. The man was so poor that he longed for food that fell from the rich man's table. And his skin was covered with sores. Even the dogs licked the sores. And later on, if you look at the conclusion of the story, Jesus tells us that when Lazarus died, he went to heaven. And when this rich man died, he went to hell. I got to tell you this. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because there was no testimony in Lazarus. He looked at a man who, though he was a good man, had such a bad life. That this man said, if this is what God does with people when you give him your life, I'd rather never give him mine. Because if you come to God, all you have is a ticket to go to heaven. And here, you are a poor beggar whose skin is covered with sores and who longs for food falling from the rich man's table. And the dogs lick your sores. But that's what you get. Then I'd rather not come to this God because he might make me like Lazarus. And the rich man eventually died and went to heaven, went to hell. This man Lazarus was strategically placed at the rich man's gate. He was presented to the rich man. 
as a carrier of the message of God, but his poverty distorted God's message and presented a distorted message of God Almighty that put the rich man off and cost him his soul for all eternity. And you'll be shocked to discover how many saints have carried a distorted message to this world until the world has turned away from God because they're wondering, okay, if God makes people look like you, I don't ever want to come to this God because I fear looking like you. Poverty is scary, beloved. It scares so many people. There's so many people that like you because you're a good person. But because you have such a bad life, they're scared of joining you because they know they're going to become a good person like you, but with a bad life like yours. And so because of that, they don't want to come to God. So they're saying, okay, let me try to sort out my life for a while, hoping that when I'm about to die, that somewhere I can be able to give my life to God. Because if all that redemption gives is a ticket to go to heaven, then why not believe God that when I'm in the hospital deathbed, I might as well give my life to God, get a ticket to go to heaven. I pray you get what I'm saying in here. Hallelujah. Poverty upon your life distorts God's message. You were sent to mankind as a channel of redemption. And there is somebody that will never experience redemption except through your life. And when you come to humanity as a channel of redemption, first of all, you present to them your redeemed life. Before they can truly receive the redemptive power that comes through your life. They want to look at your redeemed life. When they look at your redeemed life and see that it carries the power of redemption. That you have benefited from the power of the same redemption that you seem to be preaching. And suddenly they're willing to come to the Lord. But when they look at your redeemed life and they see poverty and they know how terrible poverty is and they know how fearsome poverty is and they know how evil poverty is. When they look at your life and they see your life carries poverty and you claim to be the redeemed of the Lord, they're seeing the product of redemption. They're seeing the workmanship of God. They're seeing the product of redemption, the new creature. That when you come to Christ, you become a new creature. The old has gone, the new has come. They're looking at your life. They're seeing the new creature. And the new creature they see is decked up with poverty from head to toe. And so you are a good person with such a bad life. But they want to have a good life. So they say, wait a minute. This repels me. Because if God makes people like this guy, then I think I might as well postpone my coming to him. Lest he makes me like this person. Your poverty distorts the message of God. And disables your mission is God's message. The Bible says that we are called to disciple humanity in the kingdom. You're a disciple sent to disciple. The book of Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 18 to 19. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations. We are called to be disciples and to disciple somebody else. And every time that you present yourself to someone that God has sent you to, he sees a disciple. And when someone sees the disciple, he sees what God will make him into. And so when you begin to call them to be the, become disciples of Christ, and you're sending the message of the Christ, and you're seeking that they join with you, they look at the life of this disciple who has become as a messenger of God. And poverty distorts your message and makes them scared that when they become a disciple like you, they may as well have a life like yours. Poverty distorts the message of your life. You're called according to Acts 1, verse number 8. The Bible says, that you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses 
A witness is one who manifests Christ. Again, when you go to mankind, you're presenting one that manifests the Christ. And when they look at you, poverty makes them see a distorted version of the Christ you manifest. And makes them never want that Christ. Jesus spoke to Paul. As Paul reports in the book of Acts 26, in verse number 18. He said, I'm sending you to the Gentiles and to your own people. I'm sending you to a people. I'm sending you on a mission. There is someone only you will go to. I'm sending you, Paul, to your people and to the Gentiles. And he gave them the mission. Three things to do. To open their eyes. Number two, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So you're going to open the eyes of the people so that they may see God. Now I'm going to tell you, when you come to humanity and you're sent by God to open their eyes, when they see poverty, they want to close their eyes. Poverty makes somebody begin to feel his eyes irritated. He does not want to see what he's seeing. And he doesn't want to become like you when you carry poverty. Why? Because he can see something that makes the eye irritate. And it's not long before he wants to close his eyes to what you're trying to open his eyes for. Poverty empowers you to close people's eyes, not open them. Because your life's testimony is so negative that humanity wants to run from the God you represent. I pray that this makes sense to you. Said that you will turn them from darkness to light. Poverty is a factor of darkness. So when you carry it, you're carrying darkness yourself. Said you will turn them from the power of Satan to God. Poverty is the power of Satan. So when you carry it, you are not turning humanity to God. You're carrying the power of Satan itself. Poverty is a curse. It distorts your life's mission as God's message. It disables your life's mission as God's message. I pray that you get it because the moment you get it, then you understand that poverty is something to outrun and you begin to cry to God to give you the power to race against poverty and win. I pray that that gets into your spirit, beloved. I got to stop at this point. Because I don't want to take too much of your time. But I pray that you're going to invite somebody as we journey this journey together. Because as I get to download this unit into your spirit, I pray that God is going to cause you to clearly see the force of poverty. Because if you can see how evil poverty is, you will begin to run. And before long, it's not long before you get to discover that you're running from poverty makes you run to wealth. And that is capacity. That is ability. I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you because of every person that has listened to this word. I pray, Father, that he may grant that every soul will get the message coming from the heart of the Lord. And that somebody will get to rise up from the place of poverty. That somebody will wake up from the place of poverty. That somebody will begin to develop hatred to poverty. In the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody will rise up from that place of sitting in the dust of poverty. And begin to reach out for God to raise them from this platform. Lord, I pray that he may cover every life with the grace of God. That he begin to break the power of poverty from the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand as a servant of God and I rebuke the cloud of poverty over everybody listening to me. I command every satanic cloud of poverty that has captured mankind to break right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I command freedom in the spirit, in the soul, in the mind. I command freedom upon everybody listening right now in Jesus' name mighty name. I want to pray with you, somebody. You want to give to the Lord. You want to do your givings because this is how you also connect with the power of God. 
And so you want to give your tithe, you want to give of your offerings. If you want to do that on this altar, I want to pray with you right now. That as you give, God's going to open the heavens according to his word. And the power of God's going to come upon your life. And you will begin to see what it means when God says that he gives you the power to make wealth. When God said that he raised the poor from the dust, you will begin to see what that, God, that means as God begins to walk with you. So I want to just get to uh, our information there. You will see the numbers and you will be able to communicate to us in case you want to do that right now. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everybody that's listened to this word. Everybody that desires to give of their substances to the kingdom of God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that according to your words, you open the heavens over the lives of your people and pour your blessing upon them that there will not be enough room. Father, I pray for your favor and your blessing upon the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that their companies will thrive. Their work will thrive. Their businesses will thrive. I pray that your people will not lose their employment even in this season. Lord, I pray for restoration for those that have lost their employment. You will grant them a platform, my God, to build economic strength in Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray with somebody that wants to give your life to Christ right now. You've never done that before or you give your life to Christ, you're backslidden and you want to say a prayer and you want to mean it from the depth of your heart. I want to do that right now with you before I get a close. So if you are there, just say this word. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you and I ask you to come into my life. I acknowledge that you alone are the savior of the world. I ask you to come into my life. Save my soul. For today I give you my life. To be my Lord and my savior. In Jesus name. If you've said that prayer and meant it from the depth of your heart. I got to tell you. God has saved your soul. You can talk to us. We will celebrate together with you. If you're not able to access us physically. Get to a church that you know is a Bible believing church. And go there and please let them know you have given your life to Christ and you desire to grow in a church. And God's going to help you grow on that platform for his glory. God bless you so much. We love you. We pray that you will be able to join us every Wednesday as we get to discuss the word of God on this program. God bless you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>